Hey, Trampians, thank you for watching another episode of Too Late to Sleep. This week brought to you by Caffeine Pills, because that's the only way that I'm going to make it through this week. This is Too Late to Sleep. Yeah, so this week is... Uh, killing me and it's all because of my addiction to wrestling because holy crap how much awesome wrestling has there been starting with TakeOver uh, just an amazing show every match was just at an amazing level from the very beginning uh, with Johnny Gargano losing because he got distracted with a DIY shirt showing that that story is going to be going on for quite a while uh, interested to see how they twist it and turn it until Ciampa comes back. Uh, I'm hoping that Andrade Almas is ready for promotion soon. I'd love to see him on the main roster, especially now that they've kind of seemed to have figured out where they're going with him. Uh, then we saw Red Dragon debut as a tag team. We'd seen them in individual action on NXT, uh, but this was the first time that they've kind of shown them together. Uh, they came out after the Tag Team Championship match to assault Sanity and the Authors of Pain. And then again at the very end after Drew McIntyre won the Singles Championship when they also debuted. Yes. So the three of them appear to be in a stable together. Everybody seems to think that uh, it's going to have something to do with them all being from Ring of Honor even though I think Red Dragon really kind of transcended that after they left Ring of Honor. Uh, and Adam Cole really, even while he was still with Ring of Honor, kind of was more famous as part of the Super Click. Uh, you know, once he kind of joined the Bullet Club, it just kind of became less about Adam Cole being Ring of Honor as Adam Cole being the Young Bucks buddy that wasn't Kenny Omega. And that's what fueled the being the elite videos, that's what fueled the whole Bullet Club story with him and Kenny and the Bucks and it's what fueled getting uh, Marty Skrull into the Bullet Club. And while half of that story did take place in Ring of Honor, it was more about the characters themselves than about where they were. So I think that's probably not the best way to go with it. But that doesn't mean that's not how they're going to go with it. We will see. Uh, then the next night we had SummerSlam, which was an incredibly uneven show. Some really good matches and some not so good matches. Uh, on the pre-show, which means a lot of people are going to forget about it, uh, but on the pre-show the SmackDown Championship match between the Usos and the New Day was the best main roster tag team match this year. Uh, NXT has had a couple better tag team matches, but not many, and I have not seen a main roster tag match that I enjoyed more than this one. It was really, really well done, really great storytelling, really great tag team uh, ring psychology, uh, but yeah, it was an amazing match. If you haven't seen it, if you skipped it because it was the pre-show, go back and watch it. Uh, most of SummerSlam was kind of skippable, but the main event was just like we expected it to be an amazing host fight with four of the best big men in the business. Uh, I did not expect Brock Lesnar to retain, uh, but in the end he did. And the next night he got challenged for the next pay-per-view against Braun Strowman. So he's finally getting his one-on-one -on -one match, and I'm very curious to see how that's going to go. Uh, not a whole lot else happened shockingly on Raw, which is weird because the last couple of years they really tried to treat that Monday after SummerSlam as just like a step below the Monday after WrestleMania. And we really didn't get a whole lot. A little bit, you know, they uh, tried to push some stories a little bit, but it just nothing shocking. But the next night on SmackDown, we had the main roster debut of Bobby Roode, who apparently is not going to chase the uh, championship on NXT. He's just going to let that go between Adam Cole and Drew McIntyre. Uh, we don't know how Roderick Strong is going to fit into that. Are they going to promote Roderick Strong so he starts chasing Bobby Roode, even though Bobby Roode kind of debuted a little bit as a face. 
be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, then we also had Shelton Benjamin debut. He was only in a backstage segment, but he apparently has been hired to be Chad Gable's new tag team partner, which I'm really hoping they do something with because if it's not, if it's presented exactly as they're showing it without any kind of twist, then every joke anybody ever made about uh, American Alpha being the world's greatest tag team part two and these guys being interchangeable is confirmed by WWE and I don't think that's good for either party. I am very much hoping that Shelton Benjamin turns on Chad Gable next week. Uh, whoever their tag team opponents are, they didn't say who they were so it could very easily be jobbers and then you don't even have to worry about that part of it. You just have them win quick and then you have the story. Uh, I am so looking forward to seeing Shelton Benjamin again. I haven't seen him in years. Didn't really follow him after he left WWE originally. I know that he was in Ring of Honor with Charlie Haas for a little bit. Uh, I was not watching Ring of Honor at the time. I know he went to New Japan. He was part of Suzuki Goon. Uh, I think a little bit of their time in Noah. Uh, but I just I haven't followed him. And I'm really looking forward to seeing if he is the same guy today that he was during his original run, if he is, these are going to be some amazing matches. So the Pro Wrestling World Cup is going on, and that is the biggest part of my backlog. I'm about halfway through the round of 16 as we're filming this. Uh, by the time that you have watched this, hopefully I will be caught up uh, because there will be the finals going up around the same time. So little bit behind but these are some amazing wrestlers that are booked in this the matches I have seen are really good they're doing a little bit to progress the uh, WCPW prestige storyline they're going on Joe Hendry uh, who if you only kind of vaguely follow indie wrestling he was for a long time the guy who would do parody music videos uh, for his entrance video making fun of his opponent and he dropped that since he turned heel but he is now the WCPW champion and leader of a stable called The Prestige. Uh, they've been trying to recruit different people. Uh, they've got a lot of the titles in WCPW, and they're doing a little bit to progress that story, but mostly the Pro Wrestling World Cup is its own thing. Uh, they're trying to keep it uh, mostly separate from the normal storylines just so that it kind of has its own integrity as a tournament, and I love that they're doing that. And it also allows them to bring in people who are only available for these three dates and aren't going to be part of WCPW going forward, or might or might not be. Uh, and it lets them use them in a way that they couldn't if they were only using WCPW talent to progress the WCPW stories. Uh, it's really good uh, the way they're handling it. Give it a check. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's free. It's not going to cost you anything. Uh, there's a lot of wrestling going on this week. IPW UK was just earlier today on a Flow Slam. I'm behind on that because there's so much wrestling to watch. Uh, GFW Impact, as I'm filming this, was just on a little bit ago. Eli Drake is now the GFW champion. Uh, this is his first time with the belt. He has really had a great couple of years. Uh, really kind of established himself as uh, very charismatic on the mic and he's a solid wrestler. I don't think anybody's going to call him a top 10 wrestler but on the mic he has really proven himself and that is something that a lot of the GFW talents just can't compete with so it really gives him an advantage that a lot of them don't have. Uh, there's only a handful that have been around that actually can command the mic like he does. I'd say Gene Storm and EC3 uh, especially with some of the losses they've had in talent. It's such a short list that has that bit where they excel. So it helps them stand out and I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go with him as champ, what stories they go. They had American Top Team interfere again. Uh, they're doing Bobby Lashley's MMA team versus GFW management. So yay another management story where the management is the good guys this time. That's what I love to see. Uh, we have on Monday morning the May Young Classic every episode except for the finals 
will be dropping at once. They're all they're not being broadcast weekly like the Cruiserweight Classic was. They are all getting put on the network in one big dump. And that may not be a choice of bad choice of words just because of how they are choosing to do it. I don't like it. I wish they were trying to make a bigger deal out of scheduling it every week. I know that now that they do 205 Live after SmackDown, it makes it harder for them to schedule. They're actually going to be bumping an episode of 205 Live for the finals in a few weeks. Uh, but they could have gone after NXT. NXT is only an hour. They could have put it after NXT had that built-in audience staying on. They decided not to for whatever reason. You know, they decided not to for whatever reason. But there's some amazing talents on there. A lot of women that have gotten big on the indies, like Tony Storm, uh, some women from GFW uh, that left fairly recently, like Mia Yim. Uh, you got Candice LeRae, who is just one of the most famous women on the indie female uh, scene. Uh, obviously Johnny Gargano's wife, but really got over as the uh, one half of the world's cutest tag team, which is still competing today, as I just found out. I thought they split up when this May Young Classic started filming, but she's actually had matches with Joy Ryan since then. Uh, so, you, you live, you learn. Uh, and then this weekend, it will not be broadcast anywhere I added it to the wrestling calendar that I've linked before. I'm going to link it again down here. I want you to check it out. Uh, it is on the calendar only because of just how big a deal it is. That is the Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. Gorilla. I, they call it Gorilla, but it's spelled Guerrilla. It's a pun, I know. I, it's the PWG Battle of Los Angeles. It is the biggest tournament in independent wrestling. Uh, it's on par with anything. The Ted Petty Classic used to be a big deal. It is not anymore. Bola is a star maker. Uh, it is going to have a shitload of wrestlers. Check the calendar to see all the first round matches. And then there's a couple non-tournament matches. They had to cancel one uh, because of injury. So the Young Bucks will not be in a tag match on night one like they are originally scheduled. But there's going to be a match on night two with the Elite all three members. Uh, Kenny Omega does not wrestle in America very often. This is very rare, uh, especially outside of New Japan's G1 US special. Uh, and we won't be able to see it until the DVDs ship out, and that will probably not be until late September. They have contracts that uh, a lot of these wrestlers have with different companies, whether it's New Japan or GFW, or whatever where they cannot appear on a show that is broadcast live anywhere uh, so that's why they don't do live streaming and some of them cannot appear on a show that has a DVD release within 60 days or 90 days or whatever uh, so they have to honor those contracts if they're going to keep booking people like the Young Bucks like Kenny Omega uh, if they were to release these you know, a week and a half later, how, whatever time it would take to do the rush printing job on the DVDs, they wouldn't be able to book these guys. So that's why PWG DVDs take so long to get out. But when they start the pre-sale for them, which will probably be the day after, uh, we'll be putting that information out. When they start shipping, we'll be putting that information out. This is the biggest show on the indies this year. And is a bigger deal than anything else on the calendar and that's why it's on the calendar uh, but please check that calendar out because there are so many shows that uh, are on YouTube that are on basic cable that are on uh, high spots network uh, they just started doing live streaming recently uh, so many shows that are on powerbomb TV we just added there's all these different providers of wrestling flow slam uh, that are just trying to bring you live wrestling and what's better than that? Give it a check. Thank you, Trampians. Thank you for listening to me ramble for way too long. I appreciate it. Sorry for the little bit of a uh, lower uh, lower res show this week. Thank you for sticking with me though. I love you as always. Cheers.